something somebody wrote about um, enlightenment I thought was quite interesting because it talks about dispassion and this person said dispassion doesn't seem, sound very enticing okay you know we like to be passionate and it, it didn't sound very appealing Tends, again, it's, it's clarifying terms, isn't it? Depends what we mean by dispassion. Dispassion. Mm. Um, I mean, for instance, I enjoy watching football. I don't really enjoy watching England football team play football, <laughs> but I will, out of that sense that maybe one day we'll get it together. Yeah. And then we we lose to a team that everyone thinks we sh we should beat. And you experience that kind of disappointment, that, that, the painfulness of that. But you just simply don't become passionate about it. Mm -hmm. You go, oh yeah, yeah that's, that, that's a shame. <laughs> <laughs> but do you still enjoy uh, the game? That particular game, no. But, um, I mean, if it was a good game... But I enjoy the game of football. Doing, I enjoy yes. the game of football. Yes. Now, we could, we could round that up. We could talk about anything, mm -hmm. really. Uh, in, in terms of somebody's passion, I have a passion for meditation. <laughs> in that sense, in the sense of understanding its value, understanding the value of the Buddhist teaching, mm -hmm. understanding what what human beings truly are and, and, and can be if they if they want to discover it for themselves. Uh, so it is a passion. But if someone came along and said, <laughs> uh, "Yeah, all this." We're, you know, we're a Christian society, and all this Buddhism has to stop. But that—that would be it, wouldn't it? I'd be like, "All oh, right." Well, yes. not quite. I'm, I'm actually contradicting myself there because I'd still do it. <laughs> but and I'd probably get in all sorts of trouble for for, for doing it. But I wouldn't. I wouldn't care about that. Mm. Um, but the, the point is, is that it is perfectly possible to come to a complete comprehension of life and understand that there is nothing to get head up about. Nothing that you need to go around bashing somebody else's head about. Mm. There is nothing that you need to fight a war over or even be in dispute about. Life is beautiful, it's perfect as it is. And there is just like the most incredible, infinite, playground available where you can learn about anything and explore anything and and, and it's not time bound at all um, so you can really get into this or you can really get into that it's fine you know you just, it's, there is no there is no detrimental aspect to enlightenment <laughs> at all the only thing that gets taken away is the ignorance that gives rise to, to passionate resistance, the non-acceptance that life is the way it is. That's the basis of all views, um, it's the basis of all all inefficient behaviours. Oh, and efficient behaviours, actually, come to think of it. It's, that's, that's the problem, it's the ignorance that gives rise to that passionate resistance. Mm. Remove that, and you've got perfection, which was al it has always been here. But has always been ignored. What about empathy? Somebody else was very concerned that if you're enlightened you wouldn't have any empathy or compassion. <laughs> Who do you hang out with? Oh, no. <laughs> no, 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 don't, don't answer that. You don't want to know. <laughs> I mean, enlightenment is, is... Enlightenment is the recognition that there is no separation between anything anyway. So, as a consequence of understanding that, you see the appearance of, of separate beings around you in the conventional way of looking at things, and you see that they don't understand how simple life is, and how free of agitation and conflict and division you can actually be. What do you think that, un you know, what do you think that naturally produces in a in a in a mind that doesn't have that selfish root? Compassion. You just go, well, I'd really love everyone to come mm. to recognise this, but you also recognise empathy, that people have got their lessons to learn. Mm. They've got their battles that they need to fight 
in one way or another. And, and so compassion is linked with equanimity. It's, it's, there's the compassion, the wish for beings to be free of suffering and recognizing that you can help in providing the necessary supporting conditions to allow somebody to stop suffering. But the equanimity to recognize that we all fare on according to our deeds, that people see life in ways very different to you and that that's fine and they have to be allowed their freedom to explore life in whatever way that they see fit. They're as much as of the truth as you are. Mm. So they've, they've got every right to um, make mistakes or achieve the things that they really wanted to achieve in life and then see them turn to dust. You know, you've got, you, it, it, the true spiritual path is always founded on suffering. If, if, if it's suffering that is the springboard, it is suffering which is the, is the, creates the strong wish to be free of suffering. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what impels somebody on a spiritual journey. So how does that relate to something called engaged Buddhism? I'm not entirely sure what it is, but I think it's possibly to do with if you see people suffering, you're going out. So social activism. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the, the Buddha maintained that moral habit was not the whole of the path. Uh, it's part of the path. It is, being of service to others is an integral part of the path because if it's done well and properly without views then it promotes a lessening in self-concern. You, you find that being of, of service to others without concern for yourself is actually extremely enjoyable. It's a lovely, mm. it's a, it's a lovely state of mind, a beautiful state of mind. That then acts as a lovely basis for practicing insight meditation, recognizing that the cause of suffering is not external, the cause of suffering is craving, born of ignorance, which is an internal matter, mm. and you can't therefore resolve suffering conclusively externally. You can, mm. m you can ameliorate people's suffering, definitely. You can provide for them, definitely. But you can't stop them suffering, because the problem is ignorance born of craving. Mm. And what you're seeing are the results of past action. And by all means, absolutely, no one would, would try to put somebody off from helping another, but it's got to be done in a balanced way that includes the exploration of one's own personal experience through meditation or mindfulness. Mm. The combination of the two is hugely powerful because the, 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 the more of that selfish preoccupation that is let go of through meditation, through what you see in meditation, means that you have vastly more space, psychological space, to help others. Mm -hmm. you know, so, you know, it's, it's the idea that somehow meditation is selfish is, is a ridiculous idea. It can only be borne by people who don't meditate. We don't understand it. Because as soon as anyone sits down, closes their eyes and attends to the breathing process, they very quickly become aware of suffering. <laughs> That's true. Very yes. quickly. Because yes. yeah. the mind goes off and they go, oh, it's gone off. And they drag it back again, oh, stay where you are. And it goes off, and, oh. Mm -hmm. And before you know it, yeah, they're craving for life to be different than it is. Mm -hmm. And all those obstacles those wrong views, wrong perceptions, and all the, the views and ideas that come out of it are all, are all there to be seen. So, yeah, so it's, it's a combination of the two. But to just, to think that the Buddha's teaching is just about helping people externally mm. is to not understand the Buddha's teaching. Mm. 